call it a tomahawk steak, call it a meat lollipop, call it a rib chop, whatever you call it, when it comes to venison, we're talking about a medallion of backstrap that's still attached to a rib bone. And yes, that means we're doing another venison video. Like I mentioned before, it was a very fruitful hunting season for me and my group, and I've basically got a backlog of venison recipe videos I've been meaning to make for years. So I'm finally getting around to doing all of them, and I've got something like 10 more coming after this one. So if you don't care about venison, I guess I'll see you in like March or April? Anyway, we're talking about venison tomahawk steaks. The ordinary common way to deal with backstraps is pretty much to cut the long backstrap off of the deer and slice it up into some steaks. You're essentially slicing the whole thing away from the bones. But with these little lollipops, you leave it attached to the bone and basically separate the whole rib, with the meat still attached, from the rest of the deer. Does it add much to the flavor? Not really. It's mostly for presentation and to make what looks like a pretty fancy dish. Accordingly, I've never actually prepared backstrap steaks this way, so this is going to be somewhat of an experimental video for me. But I still like the idea of trying it, and as with most ideas worth trying, we're going to be using an electric sawzall. And a quick warning that the very next scene after this intro and the theme song will depict a deer carcass hanging in my garage and me going at it with a sawzall. If that's something you'd rather not see, you may want to skip ahead a minute or two, at which time I'll be preparing and cooking these steaks in about the most delectable and sumptuous way imaginable. Now enough of the preamble, it's tomahawk time. Now, I've only ever seen this done on the internet, which means I have zero real life experience. So I'm going to do my best and hope it comes out the way I want. Now, I'm doing this whole thing before removing the front or rear quarters in hopes that the extra weight on this deer will help it keep from moving around much when I start sawing. The first thing I did was remove the inner loins. I don't want to risk damaging them with the saw or anything else. Next, I'll saw the non-meat end of the ribs to make those rib bones about as long as I want them to be. This will also help simplify things a little and make it a bit easier to see what I'm working with. Now I'm going to remove the portions of the back straps basically right up to where the rib cage starts. Only the rib adjacent portions of the back straps can be used for the little tomahawks, so I want to get basically everything else out of the way. Next, I'm basically scoring a line along my rib back strap pieces right up against the spine to serve as a guide for the saw. And then I'm just going to start sawing along the spine as carefully as I can to separate those rib bones and the meat away from the spine. Once I've gotten through all the ribs, I'll just slice each rack free with my knife. And while it looks about right in this video footage, the unfortunate fact is that most of the backstrap meat ended up mostly separating from the ribs. Well, this didn't end up working out real well. The way I cut it actually caused the back strap to separate from these ribs pretty bad. Uh, on this side, it still stayed attached a little bit at the end here. The other side, it completely just separated from the ribs and my little venison tomahawk experiment was pretty much a failure on that side. I'm not 100% sure what I did wrong. I think maybe I shouldn't have kind of scored that guideline in the back strap before I started with the saw, or maybe I should have used the other method where I just try to pop the ribs out of the spine one by one. But I've got one or two little ends here that I can cut and maybe try to cook up and this whole thing will work like I'd hoped, so I guess we're gonna try that out. So I'll go ahead and slice off those two little tomahawks from the rest of it. And as you can see here, the rest of that meat is just barely hanging on. I'll just pull it the rest of the way off and this will become regular old backstrap steaks. As for my two tomahawks, I'll trim and clean up that tissue and little bit of rib meat around the bone. This is called Frenching and basically just means trimming up and exposing the bone for the sake of presentation. 
I already had an idea of how I wanted to cook these meat lollipops, but I felt like it needed some sort of sauce or jus to drizzle over top. And since I'm already going with a French style preparation, I figured I might as well go full on French cuisine with this thing. So I decided to make a simple Bordelais sauce to go with it. While a Bordelais sauce can be far more elaborate, I'm going quite basic. Bordelais is basically fancy talk for concentrated shallot, red wine, and beef sauce. It takes a little while to make, but almost all of the time spent is just waiting for liquids to reduce in a pan. So after melting some butter in my saucepan, I'll throw in a whole bunch of thinly sliced shallots and a big pinch of kosher salt. Now to let that saute and caramelize for a while on medium low heat, somewhere around 15 minutes. Once those shallots are all a nice caramelized golden brown color, in goes my dry red wine. I'm using Merlot. Then I need to just let that simmer until most of the wine is reduced, about 10 or 15 minutes. At that time, I'll pour in my beef stock. A classic Bordelais calls for veal stock, but beef stock works just fine. I could also use venison stock, but I haven't made any yet this year. Now to let that beef stock reduce by at least half. This will be another 20 minutes or more. Like I said, this sauce takes a while, but it really couldn't be simpler to make. It's just waiting and then more waiting, followed by some waiting. I'm looking for the sauce to be a lot thicker than where we started, but I don't want a full on thick gravy. Once it looks just about right, there's really just one more thing I have to do. Using a fine mesh strainer funnel, I'm going to strain the liquid out of this mixture, leaving the solids behind. Go ahead and use those shallots for something if you like, but they're not needed anymore for the sauce. I'll use a ladle to press as much precious sauce out of those shallots as possible. At this point, you can season the Bordelais with black pepper and salt if you like, but I think it tastes perfect just as it is. Now our Bordelais is done, and we can start actually making those venison steaks. I'm going to season the fronts and backs of these lollipops with some simple salt and pepper, but I want to do something a little extra for the edges. So I'm doing a sort of dry seasoning and herb crust, and I'll just gently roll the outer edges of each piece of meat in a mixture I made using coarse salt, coarse pepper, dehydrated garlic and onion, and dry parsley. This should give some good texture and a hit of big flavor to each bite without being overwhelming. And one more thing before we cook these things. I wanna make some quick herb garlic butter with which to baste the meat as it's cooking. So I'll just start melting some butter and throw in some smashed garlic, a few thyme sprigs, and some fresh chopped parsley. The smell of this alone would be enough to make you wanna try this recipe. Now we're finally ready to cook. I'm going with a cast iron skillet so I can get a really nice sear. So after getting some olive oil pretty darn hot in that pan, I'm going to start by gently searing the edges of those little steaks. I want those edges to get some heavy direct heat before I lay them down in the pan so all of those seasonings and herbs have a chance to really cook in and so they'll hopefully stay in place and form a beautiful crust. I did end up losing some of that seasoning into the pan and since I don't want all that to start burning, I'll give the pan a quick wipe, then add in a little more oil. Now to lay down those steaks and start searing the flat sides. Again, this pan is over pretty high heat, so I'll only wait about a minute before turning my steaks for the first time. And as soon as I've turned them, I'm basting with the garlic herb butter. After another minute, I'm turning again and basting again. Basically, I'll turn and baste every minute or so until they're cooked to a beautiful medium rare. And because I use a meat thermometer, I'll know exactly when it's time to pull them off. So when my thermometer reads 130 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm taking them out of the pan and letting them rest for five to 10 minutes. The temperature will continue to climb a little bit in that time and we're aiming for a perfect 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Now to plate up this masterpiece of wild game cuisine. Not much to it. Lay down those gorgeous mini tomahawks, drizzle some of that rich savory Bordelais sauce over top and finish with a pinch of fresh parsley. Now look at that and tell me you wouldn't climb over your own mother to have a taste. Oh wait, we're supposed to be doing fancy in French today. Uh, look at that and tell me you wouldn't um, cede North American land to British control in exchange for Caribbean territories. Anyway, let's dig in. 
I don't think I could have cooked that more perfectly if I tried, which I did. And I just have to mop up a little bit more of that Bordelais for the perfect first bite. I know I keep saying this, but it rings true video after video and recipe after recipe. You owe it to yourself to stop making venison in the same old ways. Try some new recipes. Try some fancy recipes. Venison has been used throughout history in all manner of cuisines and recipes. It's a little less forgiving than some of the other proteins, but if you cook it properly and get creative with it and make some of these a little bit more elaborate recipes, you're going to end up with such an amazing final product that you're going to wonder why you haven't been doing this all along. Did I need to make the little tomahawk lollipop thingies for this recipe to work? Of course not. I could absolutely have just used a regular backstrap steak and done pretty much everything the same way as I did right here. That little bit of seasoning crust around the edges, the garlic herb butter, and of course that absolutely savory Bordelais sauce. Heck, forget the venison altogether. Next time you want to blow away your partner or your family or whoever you want to impress with a nice meal, just make any kind of a steak, a beef New York strip steak, a ribeye, anything and make some of that Bordelais sauce and drizzle it over top. A little goes a long way. Seems like it was pretty elaborate to make, but most of it's just waiting for it to reduce. Doesn't take a lot of ingredients or technical skill or anything in between, but the flavor is so concentrated and amazing, drizzled over some red meat. And as always, check out the video description below for the full recipe of how I made these little steaks, including that very simple Bordelais sauce. And be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future venison videos, of which I will have another one next week, and the week after that, and the week after that. I don't even know how many more weeks after that. The next few weeks are all about venison. Thanks for watching, and make sure your food is made out of food. And until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.